Item 20, the motion on the Community Safety Division and paragraph 17 of report number 2, Tenancy Policy. On item 20, I've received a request from Councillor Osborne to speak for 10 minutes, and I now call upon Councillors Osborne and Mrs Cooper to move and second the motion on the Community Safety Division. I shall move it formally, Mr Mayor, if I may. You may, thank you. And uh, Mrs Cooper? Uh, Mr Mayor, but I will speak. Uh, Mr. Mayor, fellow members, okay. um, it's clear from the written and the verbal answer to question 27 uh, that the Cabinet Member for Environment, Culture and Community Safety both believes that cuts to the Community Services Division are appropriate, but simultaneously admits that the Sorry, Mr. lack... Sorry, could, could we just have a little bit of quiet in the chamber, please, councillors? Thank you that the lack of recruitment to police constable posts at the same time as vacancies are rife amongst the PCSOs has left a very large gap. Yes, indeed, and timescales have slipped, as he says. And the results are that for the last year, uh, for, since March, so for half a year so far, and for another half a year, making a full year in total, we're going to be low in police numbers in this borough. Something that at one time the party opposite used to criticise endlessly, but at the moment seems quite complacent about. Local people have started commenting on it, and indeed Sadiq Carden has written today to uh, the borough commander, to um, Commander Chinchin, talking about the problems and issues that are going on in the First Down Ward, where we are extremely short-staffed, and as Councillor Randall has pointed out, um, actually sharing an acting um, sergeant with uh, the... Uh, with, with teams across the south of the borough. This is completely unsatisfactory um, and I wish it was something that the cabinet member would take up effectively um, with uh, Commander Chinchin um, because people have started to comment on the absolute absence of seeing their local bobbies on the beat either on foot or on their bicycles. And the idea that flexing other teams who might turn up in cars is not quite the same. What people have got used to, what they want, are local safe and neighbourhood teams that are not half empty whilst PCSOs go and before new PCs arrive. What they want to see are people that they know patrolling their local streets that they can have confidence in and that are faces that are known to them in their local community. So at a time when all of this is going on with local people being concerned about the absence of police on our streets, is a 25% cut in the staff of the Community Services Division wise? The staff side, who often actually don't particularly submit any comments when um, some reorganisations are suggested, um, have made a number of comments in this particular instance, and their comments are quite concerning. And therefore, this does not see, seem like the right time to go ahead with these cuts. I would therefore ask that everybody supports our motion. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Clay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I wonder if everybody is aware of the motion that we're actually debating here, because you wouldn't know it from what Councillor Cooper has just been going on about. Um, we aren't actually debating anything to do with police numbers. We're, we're debating about the review of the Community Safety Division. I'm glad she got there in the end. Feeling safe as you go about your daily business is rightly regarded as the most important thing for residents of Wandsworth. We are already the safest in a London borough, and 70% of residents thinking we're doing, think we're doing a good job keeping it that way. But it isn't just the work of the Community Safety Department that makes Wandsworth such a great place to live. Cast your mind back to the August riots. The Broom Army, Army outnumbered the rioters. Remember the guys in the Northcote pub who stopped rioters getting any further. Here, neighbours look out for each other. Motorists wait patiently at green lights while frail residents cross the road. Teachers in our schools and social workers in the council have the safety of children and vulnerable adults at the heart of everything they do. Community safety is behind the work of many of the council's employees because it's so important and cuts across every department. There is an inference in the motion that the restructuring of the community safety department somehow means that safety is compromised. This is wrong. It recognizes just how important it is 
and creates a structure that harnesses together the efforts that are made every day by neighbourhood watch coordinators, by our police, by our housing department, by our town centre managers, by our residents associations, by our troubled families teams, by our scout leaders, by the fire brigade, by our day centre managers, by our teacher, teachers, sorry I'm going on, but the list is endless. We're all working together to keep our community safe. The old ways of working, by which each member of staff in the community safety department had a specific task, are out of date. By concentrating on the problems in a geographical area, the responsible officers can coordinate a response that should solve these problems. This could mean encouraging a charity offering football for free, could mean a change in an SNT shift pattern, could mean changing the design of an alleyway, could mean getting residents to start a residence association, could mean encouraging volunteers to get a homework club going in the library. Again, the list is endless. Modern communications mean getting simple crime prevention messages across has never been easier, and this function has been taken over by the communications department. Administrative functions have also been transferred away from the community safety department. The new way of working means we need certain key people with specific skills and we don't need as many as before. It's sad when loyal staff who've worked for the council for a long time find their position is no longer needed, but it's a sign of a dynamic and efficient council that better ways of doing things can be found. It's never easy to make jobs redundant, but far from being contrary to residents' wishes, this restructuring will confirm their belief that they've got a great council which spends their money wisely. The motion in front of us will also confirm the electors' opinions that the Labour Party aren't fit to run, to run Wandsworth. The council's role is not to create jobs and then keep people in them for life or manufacture other jobs for them. The opposition's stuck in the past, probably still mourning the loss of the night soil collectors and gas lamp lighters. This motion should be rejected. Thank you. Councillor Fairbrother. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think it's right that we should have a right, uh, root and branch review of the activity. Um, we're aware the police have been changing their method of operation in the past year, and it would appear to me, as someone who suffered uh, several attempted burglaries on my property, um, that um, there, there is a risk of functions being duplicated because of the changing role of the police. Um, they're putting a lot of effort into forensic examination of the scene of a crime or attempted crime and the visit of a PC raises the issue of security with the residents. Um, but it does rely on residents reporting the crime and I know a number of people who I've challenged have said they couldn't be bothered to report the crime and therefore they fall through the system. There isn't the visit from the police, etc. And in view of the changing circumstances, the report uh, uh, seeks a path for the new priorities to meet in, in changing times, and that's wholly sensible. Uh, the proposals do involve regrading upwards certain of the jobs to meet the new needs. The paper identifies that residents want this council, along with the police and other agencies, to tackle crime and fear of crime and it's essential that Community Safety Division is an effective resource, but more importantly, visible to the community. The report identifies the need to formalize the strategic crime analysis, the need to reinvigorate the neighborhood watch scheme, uh, where numbers have been static for a very long time. Indeed, in the past week, I went to a new um, uh, neighborhood watch formation um, the room was absolutely packed out and the council officer was delighted to see a room absolutely full of residents. Um, but I have to say, this was, I think, really due to the enthusiasm of the one person and the family who are the coordinator, rather than because of all the effort we put in. I think well, there's a lesson to learn from that. Um, now, this community safety division is to move, uh, move towards a problem-solving area model. Uh, no doubt that's um, moving alongside the police who are moving away from 
um, an exclusive borough and ward level policing to one based on a sector basis along with specialised teams for certain areas which will be on an across the borough basis. What's the risk involved in this change? Given undoubted importance to this, uh, this area to residents, it's where one where as a council we must not fail them. Uh, the precise format of policing in London is still not decided. It's fluid and developing and hence as a council in this review we've had to look forward and gain a sense of direction of the travel uh, of the police in their new structure. Hence there's a real risk that the final police model will not be wholly as we have envisaged. So quite sensibly the leader of the opposition moved at the OSE there should be a review in September 13 into the new structure to ensure we've got our model right in changing circumstances and by then of course we should have a clear idea of the final police model and that will allow us to adjust uh, the structure should it be necessary. But given the importance of these proposed neighbourhood officers across the whole borough whose job it is to undertake a lot of coordination work across a whole raft of organisations and council departments in each of their communities or sector. It strikes us on the opposite benches that in this new structure there is a high risk that we will have insufficient resources with only one in each area to meet the aspirations of parents. On those grounds alone we are proposing that we should have more than one officer for e in each of these sectors. I urge therefore the council to support the motion. Councillor Caddy. Thank you very much Mr Mayor. It's a pleasure to be giving my maiden speech in this debate on a subject that matters a great deal to the residents in Southfields. It's an honour to represent the ward of Southfields here at the Town Hall. It's a part of the borough where a huge number of residents are involved in a wide variety of community projects and groups. Many constituents raise with me their concerns about crime and their desire to keep our streets safe. The proposed changes to the Community Safety Division implement efficiencies that enable us to deliver value for money for our residents and a service which is fit for purpose. We know that community policing at a local level works. Police have been focusing on this as a strategy, and rightly so. Many problems people face are specific and related to the area they live in. A particular blind alley in a housing block, a dimly lit stairwell, or a difficult neighbour. The way to deal with these issues is to have officers with responsibility for their patch, neighbourhood officers. By focusing on managing their allocated areas, they will develop an excellent understanding of where the trouble spots and flashpoints might be. Neighbourhood officers will be able to act as experts for their particular patch, and using their local knowledge will act as links between different agencies to deliver tailored solutions where help is required. These proposals also identify some key areas that are important to our local communities, such as domestic violence and antisocial behaviour, and they provide for additional staff that can offer depth of experience and expertise in dealing with these areas. There are a number of ways in which these changes will improve the way that the Community Safety Division operates. The Partnership Crime Analyst is a role for which external grants will cease from April 2013. Clearly, it's really important to have accurate data on where, when and what crime takes place. This kind of intelligence isn't available anywhere else, so the restructured team will include this post as a permanent addition. Another example is Neighbourhood Watch. Watches are a perfect opportunity to strengthen communities and encourage volunteers. They are a precious resource which we should be supporting and protecting as well as spreading across as much of the borough as possible. My own ward, Southfields, has a lower number of watches than average and one of our aims as ward councillors is to improve coverage. 
Neighbourhood Watch and other community groups, such as residents' associations, SNT panels and business forums, all play an important role in community safety. The developments in this paper recognise this and put developing new watches and forging links with local organisations at the heart of the neighbourhood officer role. The proposals also recognise and keep pace with changes elsewhere. The police now visit all victims of domestic and distraction burglary, so we don't need the One Safe service to provide this function anymore. The Community Safety Division is not the only council department to actively engage in reducing crime and improving public confidence and safety. The benefits of the Family Recovery Project and the Troubled Families work being led by Children's Services, the work of the Housing Department in tackling antisocial behaviour, and the work of Town Centre Managers and Economic Development Officers following the disorder last summer. I could go on. What I'm illustrating is that these changes are not just the thoughtless deletion of posts to save a few quid. The service has carefully been reviewed and restructured to reflect the way that we are being policed and to reflect the way that common sense should tell us we should operate. As to the final part of the motion, I am of course a resident and a relatively new councillor. And what I did and do care about, and what people I speak to and meet care about, is feeling safe in the streets and in my home. I know that circumstances, areas and criminals change and adapt. I want the people I vote for to respond to this and to review and adapt our services accordingly. I would never be so dogmatic as to say I didn't want any cuts to any particular service. What I want is a service that is fit for purpose and delivers value for money. That's what residents want too. They know that we have to make savings across the board and they expect us to do that in a responsible and thoughtful manner. I would therefore urge members to vote against this motion. Now, unless I'm very much mistaken, Councillor Caddy, that was your maiden speech, so congratulations, I think, from everyone in this room. Well done. Um, Councillor Ben Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and uh, I'd just like to join the Mayor in congratulation, congratulating Councillor Caddy on a very well-delivered uh, maiden speech. If I'd had a vote in the Southfields by-election, it wouldn't have been for her, but I'm sure she'll do a very good job of <laughs> representing her constituents. Um, when I and uh, my colleagues, Councillor Daly and uh, Councillor Boswell, uh, go out and about speaking to residents in Tooting, as we do on an extremely regular basis, um, we ask them what they think about the local area, what their concerns are, and uh, I imagine that you can uh, guess what they say. They, first they say, uh, thanks for all the hard work you do on our behalf, you're much better than the last lot here. Um, <laughs> apart, apart from that nice Councillor Bowes, and... Um, Apologies, Councillor Jacob. Uh, second, they tell us that in the main, they, uh, they think Tooting's a great place to live. They think it's a, a good place to live because it's, it's friendly and it's vibrant, but uh, also peaceful and safe. Um, because they feel safe there, they don't perceive themselves or, more importantly, their families to uh, be at any risk. So it's all well and good. But uh, there is this sense growing. Um, a sense that, with so, as with so many other things right now, things are getting worse and not better. People have heard about the police cuts on the national level and indeed uh, about Boris Johnson's police cuts which are impacting right here in Wandsworth. We, we've told them about them. Um, by March 2012 there'll be, there were over 1,200 fewer police officers in London than there were in March 2010 and by 2015 this figure could have risen to more than that. People don't really actually care about those figures, but they do notice the difference on the streets, and they, they tell us about it. They notice the reductions in their safer neighbourhood team. They've registered that there just aren't as many police or PCSOs walking the streets anymore. It makes them feel their area is a little less safe than it was before. Parents take notice, and they worry, when they hear that their council won't provide a school crossing patrol at their kid's school anymore. It makes them feel their children are a little less safe than before. People notice the ongoing problems of antisocial behaviour, not a new problem, but not one that's going away either. Uh, they want to know 
what can be done to move that threatening gang away that lurks at the end of their street. They talk in our patch about the street drinkers near Tooting Broadway. We can tell them about it, that, uh, you know, in part thanks to the work that uh, we, their Labour councillors, have done to raise these issues, uh, you know, that, that we're working in partnership now with the police to tackle street drinking, uh, that we'll make sure the Safer Neighbourhood team know about the problems in their area and, uh, you know, that they'll stop by to move any wrongdoers on. But those things don't really matter when they know that there are fewer police and PCSOs available to do the work of enforcement and prevention. So when they hear that the council is cutting community safety officers too, it sends out entirely the wrong message to the local area, about the local area. You go out and talk to people across the borough, I'm sure it's the same everywhere, and they'll tell you that we should be doing more and not less to detect and monitor and enforce action against nuisances and low-level crime. Those people will tell you they want more neighbourhood level detection, not less. Um, Councillor Govindia mentioned something before. He was talking about how Wandsworth um, you know, is doing well in terms of local business uh, survival and growth, you know, that we have fewer empty shops, vibrant town centres. Um, you, you know, and, and I'm sure that uh, Councillor Cook is probably about to make some arguments about efficiency and about finances, but, you know, on that subject, reducing support for community safety, making people, making businesses feel less safe in the local area, does nothing to promote growth, does nothing to promote local job creation. It puts it at greater risk. Our proposal which is to uh, prioritise this area of work, to put more resources into those, sort of, uh, into those new neighbourhood uh, roles would promote safer neighbourhoods, make people feel safer, make businesses feel safer, create a better environment both for local residents and people and local residents um, to the benefit of everyone in the borough and the council. Thank you. I neglected to mention earlier on that um, I've been asked to allow 10 minutes for both councillors Cook and Osborne, and I've agreed to that request. So, Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have to say I find this motion uh, objectionable on several counts. Um, first of all, it transcends everything. We know that the party opposite are the authors of our current financial difficulties. Uh, and so it is, uh, no, it wasn't the bankers. In fact, I think it was just today the IMF uh, issued a report which confirmed that the structural deficit in this country before the crash had already reached 78 billion. That was you lot, not the bankers. Um, uh, you, you, need, you need to be... Thank you, gentlemen. That will do. Thank you. Councillor Belton and others, can we listen to Councillor Cook, please? Well, judging... Et tu, Brute. Je, judging Councillor by the Cook. reaction, I touched a nerve. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, no, not at all. No. That is, that is, that an apology would be nice, but I don't suppose we're going to get it. But the other reason I find this very difficult is because of the rather hollow posturing uh, on a subject of such importance to our residents. Uh, I'm very much welcome Councillor Cooper's uh, resurgence of interest in uh, residents' concern about community safety. Uh, it's community safety, by the way, not community services division, the vice-like grip of the uh, name of the, uh, uh, the uh, department in question. Um, but if they're really concerned about community safety in this borough, would they have propagated the, uh, the, um, the rumour that uh, police stations were about to close in Battersea, for which there is absolutely no foundation in truth, uh, including leaflets around large areas of the borough, spreading, spreading uh, uh, anxiety to people who, who are very concerned about that, is deeply, deeply irresponsible. Uh, and on, both, on two, uh, two particular police stations, Battersea and Lavender Hill, that uh, myth has been spread. Uh, and so I find it very difficult to take from a party that, that spreads that uh, any, any sort of a true, uh, uh, tr yeah, any truth to the fact that they're really deeply concerned about community safety because there's just a, a total inconsistency there. Um, the motion is, is, is also really rather illogical. Uh, we, can, we can agree on the outcome, uh, but they're terribly confused about the means of getting there. And as ever, when it comes to a moment of decision, they always argue that savings should be made elsewhere. It's rather like tomorrow, isn't it? It never comes. It's somewhere else that the savings must be made. Um, 
But perhaps most important of all, they've confused two distinct issues, and almost all of their speakers did it. One is short-term and operational, not run by the council, i.e. police numbers. The other is longer term and more a question of strategic direction and organizational structure, which is run by the council. SNT numbers are about boots on the ground now. The CSD reorganization is about the purpose of the team and how it fits with, with its partner agencies, internal and external. Uh, and I too would like to congratulate Councillor Caddy on her maiden speech, which very, very uh, succinctly and clearly uh, laid out uh, the important issues there. Um, we could double the headcount of the Community Safety Division and it would not put more policemen on the streets. We need to be totally clear about that. It's about as sensible as arguing that in response to a contractor having problems with autumn leaf collection, we should increase the number of people in the Town Hall Waste Management Team. Uh, it, it just wouldn't solve the problem. And, and it might make the Labour Party happy spending more taxpayers' money, or it seems to, but it would have no impact on the issue that they profess to be so concerned about. As we all know, and I've already touched on this, the, the fall in numbers uh, in SNTs uh, across the borough is the result of the PCSO, PC recruiting uh, that took place earlier this year. And I have very clearly said what I feel about that, uh, and I'm keeping up the pressure, uh, and we are heading in the right direction. Um, the CSD changes are a completely separate issue from that. The community safety landscape is evolving rapidly, as my colleagues have outlined, so I won't go into the detail again. But they are accompanied by strategic shifts in policing which compare, and many people have already commented on this, that compare with the shifts in the culture and the workings of the police that took place in the early 1960s when cars came much more into use, uh, taking policemen off the streets. It is that dramatic. And in terms of neighborhood policing, it is hugely positive. The Mayor's Manifesto makes it absolutely clear that there is a commitment to 2,000 more police uh, assigned to neighborhood policing in London. Uh, and the Commission has spoken many times about that driving the local policing model. In short, policing is becoming more local. 2,000 more officers with full powers and investigations being localized wherever possible, including detective teams being moved out of central locations into neighborhood clusters. So that is precisely what Councillor Johnson called for, and I'm delighted to tell him it is happening. So I'm sure he'll be able to support my view on this. Um, many of the other issues my colleagues have, have covered. There's a huge change going on and we have got to recognize that and change with it. I do also think it's, it's very telling that rather than focus on the task in hand, the central proposition of this motion is to maintain staff numbers and employ as many people as possible, regardless of that task, and with this confusion between ends and means, the belief that money spent is in, self, in itself a good thing and that it becomes a little easier now for us to all understand the 150 billion pound structural deficit which this country has because they were never rigorous when they were in government about asking that question they would just employ people regardless of what needed to be done yeah. it's not how we do things here uh, we look at what needs to be achieved how best to do it the resources we have why not well i'll finish my sentence if i may the resources that we have and, crucially, what other people are doing so we don't duplicate. Thank you for uh, giving way. I just wanted to make the point briefly. Uh, we're not simply proposing here uh, that the council just spends money for the sake of it. Um, we wholeheartedly agree that, we, that council taxpayers need to be getting good value for the money that they're paying in the borough. Uh, but the community safety division is relatively small. Uh, you're cutting quite a substantial proportion of headcount out of it and saying that you believe that you can get the same level of service by that restructuring. What we're contending is we don't believe you can do that. There's no trial uh, and movement to lower headcount at a later date. You're chopping a large number out here. This is not about being... Councillor Daly? Yes. You have the right to intervene, but only for 30 seconds. Okay. Well, there we go. I've made my point anyway. Okay, well, thank you, Councillor Daly. Well, I think we just have to disagree on this. I'm very confident that what we will, what we will have is a much more efficient uh, operation that is uh, very much tuned to what we need to do. Uh, and, of course, the whole thing is in the context of needing to make savings. We make no bones about that. Um, but this council is here, first and foremost, is a, is a point already made by my colleagues, to serve its residents, not the reverse. And we've got to be so, so clear about that. Um, 
The changes, therefore, to the Community Safety Division are about logical evolution set in that context for the need of savings. And changes is a constant. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to assure everyone that I am absolutely determined that these changes will keep us as the safest in a London borough. Uh, it's a reputation that's been hard won, uh, and this will reinforce that reputation. Um, Labour, I have to say, remain the party of duplication, waste, inflexibility, inefficiency, maintenance of the status quo, irrespective of the realities, ducking tough decisions, and forever clinging, forever clinging to a past and old ways of doing things, guided by their inner dinosaur, rather than looking to the future. Uh, and I think we should vote against this motion. Thank you. And that'll do. Thank you very much, Councillor Gibbons, because it's Councillor Osborne's, it's Councillor Osborne's turn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think what disturbs me most of all about the majority party's position on this is indeed the philosophy that lies behind it. I, I have to say I do congratulate uh, Councillor Caddy on a very able uh, maiden speech in this chamber outlining that philosophy. But what strikes me about that philosophy that, uh, that I find it difficult to agree with is that it seems to be based on a principle of money cut is in itself a good thing. When there is no shape, no plan whatsoever to what it is this council is trying to achieve with its cuts. We are invited to support cuts across the board throughout the council. A bit of tinkering reduction here. A bit of scything cut there. No plan or shape to any of it at all. Now I have put us on the record on our side and said okay maybe from time to time there may have to be cuts. This is a time of difficulty. This is a time of reduced resources. But if you do that there must be some shape or plan to what it is you're doing. And we would set out three areas and I've done so on the record some months ago. We would say public health education and community safety are areas where we should not be moving in and making cuts. Now, okay, you may disagree with us, but what are your areas? What are the areas you want to keep? Or are you just looking everywhere because cutting is in itself a good thing? That's where I'm struggling with what it is you're proposing. What is it? Is it on the back of an envelope that you've calculated all this stuff? Let's see where you could trim. <laughs> Where you could will the Leader of the Opposition in? give way? I will indeed. Go on. <laughs> can, I, can I just clarify? Are you really saying that you ring fence an area, no matter how much efficiencies you can get in that area while delivering a good service for less money, and you say you wouldn't do that because it's reducing the amount of money? Is that really what you're saying? Because you ring fence it. As I was saying, <laughs> the, um, there, is this, there is this overall proposition from the majority party just to go across the board trimming where they can with no shape or plan to what it is they're trying to achieve but we would we would approach it differently and we have said so and the reason we picked out those three is because we have to do what we can in the current circumstances to keep our workforce fit to get into work to skill up our young people, our children, our adult learners, and get them into work. And most important of all, get those people into work, to give them a helping hand. We have to remember, we cannot offer our citizens a helping hand if we do not, at the same time, make sure that with a strong hand, we keep them safe. And that requires working in partnership with the police and providing an adequate community safety division. The majority party has no such plan, no shape, no framework, no plan, no concept of priorities, no leadership. The reduction in headcount in the community safety division is a reckless scrapping of skills, expertise and experience in a sector, at a time and in a place where we can ill afford to do so at the moment. There are three designated areas across the borough. And what we're proposing, in one of the most populous boroughs in London, is to have one council officer, 
when if we kept the head count, we could have two or three council officers overseeing community safety in those designated areas. And I think as the cuts go through, what concerns me on the community safety side is the list which, for example, Councillor Clay gave us of members of the community playing a part in community safety notably left out some key places, some key places which of course you would leave out because there isn't going to be in some of our playgrounds the watchful eye that previously used to be there. There isn't going to be the watchful eye at the crossings next to our schools that used to be there because of the approach this way. council is taking. Is uh, Councillor Grimston hoping to intervene? Yes, yes, I'll just okay, 30 seconds, help. I think, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I, I just, uh, I, I've just been flicking through the questions this evening, Councillor. Um, you claim you've got three areas of, of priority, and yet the questions you've raised have been critical of the amount this council spends on the Green Deal, the amount that we spend on library services, there's criticism in there of waste management, and there's an extraordinary criticism that we are actually investing in a new school at Bolingbrook. How on earth can you stand there and claim that you have priorities that are focused on community health, education, community safety, when actually you simply in a knee-jerk way oppose any policy of this council? My back, my back on. Back in play, Councillor Osborne. Back in play, thank you. I think we're entitled to ask, how much do the Conservatives, when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of what's being proposed, how much do they actually care about community safety rather than their cuts programme? When, let me finish, there's an interesting point, let me finish here. Your government is the government that is quicker to cut police than to cut crime. It is the, your government's chief whip who has expressed his view of ordinary police officers. When we voice concerns, when we voice residents' concerns about the fate of Lavender Hill Police Station, we are accused of scaremongering in this chamber by the deputy leader of this council. But, but, somebody a member of the Battersea Labour Party has put in a freedom of information request in London and has received the following report from the Mayor's office. The following list of police buildings have in principle approval to be disposed of in 2012 or 13. Barking, Wilsdon, Orpington, South Norwood, Ealing, Wealdstone, East Ham, Richmond, Rotherhithe, and Lavender Hill. I think the word Councillor Cook is touche. I am putting to you right now, are you saying to us that we shouldn't say anything about Lavender Hill Police Station? We should hold back and wait until it moves from an in principle for disposal to actually being put on the market. I think the people of Wandsworth might say to us, well, you left it a bit late, Wandsworth Council. I think we need to act now. We need a campaign now, and I invite you to join us in it to try and save that police station because that particular part of the borough suffered heavy in the disturbances last summer and deserves better from this council. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Could Councillor McCausland make an intervention? Could um, Councillor Osborne, when he's making these... Um, Sorry, uh, yeah. on, on what basis Could, are you intervening, Councillor McCausland? On the basis that um, there's something that Councillor Osborne left out. That the cut... I, I, I think, uh, Councillor McCausland, unless you want to raise something under standing orders, you've missed the boat. <laughs> OK. You can't interrupt a man once he's sat down. <laughs> so, we, we now... You're the mayor... I missed that, I didn't hear it. Um, we now come to the vote, and I have to remind members that uh, they previously agreed a variation to Standing Order 17, uh, where they've added the sentence, where a vote by a show of hands is to be taken, a bell shall be rung, and after an interval of 30 seconds, that vote shall be taken. 
So the matter before the Council now is the motion on the agenda concerning the Community Safety Division proposed by Councillor Osborne and seconded by Councillor Leone Cooper. Um, before you can show by hands, uh, we need to ring the bell for 30 seconds. Ah. Would you please indicate by a show of hands those in favour of the motion? Thank you. And those against the motion? And are there any abstentions? No, there aren't. Uh, the result of the voting is 12 for, 39 against, and none abstaining. Therefore, the motion is lost.